Welcome to our next video in this series. You can see that we kind of messed up the front title slide because we had to keep reminding ourselves the formulas from the last time. So we're going to just leave these formulas up for a moment and talk about them. Last time we talked about binary classification using the sigmoid activation function and the binary cross entropy. Mohammed, could you remind us about what we did with these two formulas? Uh, so we used the cross entropy as our loss function. And if you have only two classes, some sort of binary classification, yes. some sort of is it a spam or not, is it dog or not, just two class. We use this, uh, this formula with two class, which would be this one, binary cross entropy. Yeah, so for example, P1 will be this this value here, which is going to be a probability between 0 and 1, yes. it's complement and the same with the predicted from the model, the QI. Mm -hmm. So this is one y hat for the probability of, say, class 1, and the mm -hmm. other one will be the complement, 1 minus exactly. y hat. So that's for two classes. Gives me an idea. If we have more classes, let's see, could we use it? for more classes. So we don't need to see binaries anymore. And I'm just curious as to whether we can use uh, the, the formula here for number of classes greater than two and still use the sigma, uh, sigmoid uh, activation function. Actually, yes, the first thing that like, uh, pops into our head is to just have, we have multiple classes, yeah? So we, have, we can have like multiple sigma. Sigma, yeah. sigma, sigma. Why, uh, don't we, why don't we just do that? For the, yeah, and then evaluate the uh, entropy, which is probabilities. Yeah, These so are probabilities. QIs are here. Yes. Uh, but the point is, each one of these sigmas would have a value between 0 and 1. Oh, right, it has that value asymptotic to 1 later on. Exactly. Oh, that's a problem when we start summing. Exactly, so the sum may not add up to 1. But here, the, the QIs should be probability, so uh, the sum of different classes should, uh, should be 1, actually. So we need to do something to fix the class normalization. Exactly. So that we can get probabilities instead of overflowing beyond 1, right? So what should we do? Ah, here's a formula that you presented. So yeah, that's softmax. That's a normalization over different classes. Right. So we can see that as we sum up that uh, sigma as it is there, we're going to get outputs between 0 and 1. Mm -hmm. exactly. So basically, this is the input to last layer. This would be our activation or like a prediction since this one is last layer. So if we start with these values, so if everything is zero, if there were four, four classes, four classes and everything is zero, the probability of each class is one over four, which is or a quarter. Yeah, a quarter. So I will let this simulation yeah. run. Let's see that for different uh, values. So here we go. Notice that the blue bars in value for all the four classes still add up to one. So Z2 is big, and so is AJ, and now we change it. Z3 is the biggest, and the activation output is 0.8. So it seems to work. So basically what uh, softmax does is to uh, convert these different values, normalize them to probabilities, and always uh, maximize the class with maximum number, maximize the probability of class with maximum number here. Right, so the idea is the biggest blue bar will give us the right classification. Mm -hmm. So now I think it's time to show a demonstration of this process. Let's see an example. Let's see an example. Sure, uh, so the setup is, sem is simple. These are the input to the last layer, and these are the results after softmax layers, uh, the activations after applying softmax on this Z layer. Uh, so after this, we would get our prediction, which are basically the same. 
the yeah. same uh, column for different classes. This is probability for class one, class two, class three, and class four. Right. And this one is the grand truth, is the desired output. So we want to, uh, for this input, uh, the class three is the right classification. So we want this number to go up. So how do we do that and we uh, achieve that through learning and through loss function, through minimizing this loss function? Which you've shown here by substituting the results with the, the yi is 0, 0, 1, 0 at the front and the arguments of the logs are the uh, components of y hat and the entropy, cross entropy is 2.9. So now we're going to use that, train it, and I'll yes. show the next. So actually, see this uh, output. This output is not a desired output, and we can see that we have a we have a high number for the loss function. Right. So we want to push that L down as, as low as we can, and hopefully, when we do that, the third value of y hat will rise up and agree with our desired output. So let's have. There's the next round. So if through learning we achieve a, a Z layer like this, it would result in activation or output or prediction like that. Yeah, I can see that now we're tied. Two and three are basically close to each other, only 10% yeah. difference. And that is shown in the value of loss function. It's now we weird. have a less penalty or less cost function. Yeah, so L is decreasing, so let's go again. Now this one is a good actually, this is a good prediction. The desired prediction is class 3, and we assign the highest probability to class 3. So now we can see the loss function is, to, is 0 0.5, which is like the lowest number compared to these three examples. So ideally, we'd want a loss function close to 0, as zero as we can, but we're never going to get there. So I have a question for you. In we, we have four classes here, cat, dog, fish, and pig, whatever we choose. What happens if we have a whole bunch of classes, like 10, 20, 30? Is there a, because then those, the elements there may, it may be harder to get to the right one. So is there a limit practically in a practical situation for the number of classes that we can have in our model? Uh, in terms of formula, it should be fine. We can have any number of classes. Have you ever tried it with lots of classes yourself? Uh, actually, ImageNet has like something like a, a, a thousand classes. Using softmax, Using softmax. On the, as the loss function as on loss the function. output. Wow, that's amazing. Well, that's it for us. We've shown that we have situation of good convergence and an adequate description in terms of the lead up from the sigmoid and let's see where it takes us further.